we are going to move on and we are going to talk about some of the transactions that took place the last couple of days and the question that we have is did the 76ers close the gap in the eastern conference after adding paul george and um zeta mike is yours to kick us off uh no they didn't uh to be what i put on blank because the 76ers don't have a star issue um they never did um you have tyrese maxi he emerged when ben simmons left joel mb plays well off of the tyrese maxi um uh eruption the way he's able to play the way he enhanced his game um one thing he brought james harden there i didn't like that either you had three isolation players but James Harden taught him how to be aggressive. He showed him, it's your, it's your time. Go after it. And I thought once James Harden left, it allowed Maxie to be who he truly is, which is a dominant scorer. It allowed him to be who he truly is. And I think what Philly missed, the, the what, what they mentally missed is that they need players around Joel Embiid and Tyrese Maxie, not a third star, role players, veteran players around them to round out that team. Three-point shooters, defensive tenacity players, that allows Joel Embiid and Tyrese Maxey to take breaks throughout the game so they're not playing 45 minutes of a hard basketball up and down the court. It allows them to take a little breathers through possessions and so they can finish the game strong. I think bringing in Paul George is only going to make them work even harder. Paul George is a fantastic player. He had a fantastic career. He is a selfish individual. The man is worried about self. He's worried about scoring. He's worried about taking a last shot. And the, the buzzer beater, he argued with C.J. Miles on the Indiana Pacer days because of it. He said, I need the shot last. I don't care if you're open or not. I need to take that last shot. That's not a guy you want to bring on this team where you have two young players looking to go further and win a championship for this city. Um, Paul George, he's 34 years old. He got the max contract he wanted. He, he was waiting to sit out. He said he wasn't playing unless he got a max or a big contract. So it's, it's all these different things that happen. And it's like, this is the guy you think is – what's best for the team what do we think is what's best to help this team go further and win a championship in the eastern conference i don't think so and i think um daryl morey has done a fantastic job job scamming the city of philadelphia and that ownership because of what he's been doing since he's been here he's been neglecting the team the players around joel Embiid and tyrese maxi he's just been bringing in known names just leveraging all his assets towards known names star players all this other stuff when you're neglecting the role players. I said this before on the show. I'm going to say it again. Star players do not win playoff games. The role players do. When you expand their role, they're the ones that are dominating. They're the ones doing the gritty work for 40 minutes, diving on the ground, doing everything so Joel Embiid and Tyrese Maxey caliber players are not getting hurt so they can score those points. So I think Daryl Morey, he did a horrible job with bringing in what was truly needed, which was depth at several positions. All right, Lee. The mic is yours. Look, I I I, I tend to differ a little bit. I I like to pick up a Paul George. He's a two way player, right? He, he I mean he can get it. He can get his own shot. Philly needed a a wing that can score and play defense. They needed that. The biggest issue, and I love the pickup of Andrew Drummond to to spell uh, MB because he needs some minutes off the court. His body breaks down towards the end of the season. So I love the pickup of Andrew Drummond. And then I also like the pickup of Eric Gordon. Stand still, three-point shooter. He's going to get some wide open uh, shots because of the ISO that, that Paul George can do and Maxi penetration. The problem with Philly, and, and the question is, have they closed the gap? I think if they can stay healthy, they can close the gap. But they have too many wild cards. Paul George has been hurt. And B breaks down towards the end of the season. So health is the biggest thing when it comes to Philly. Uh, when you look at look at Paul George, he misses games as well. And so he and MB, can they stay healthy? Can they play? I mean, they don't have to play 82 games, but can they play 67 to 70 games in the regular season and be healthy for the playoffs? It's the key. Maxi going to ball out. Maxi going to ball out. Put the ball in his hand, let him do his thing. I, we've seen him grow right in front of our eyes. Max is going to ball out. But can they stay healthy is the key, and that's going to determine whether they close the gap. Boston is a, is a different animal. You have to be able to score with them, but Boston has no answer for Embiid. No one does. And healthy Joel Embiid, there is no answer for him. So can they stay healthy is going to be the key. But have they closed the gap on Boston? I think they have. Health is the big factor. New York is the other factor. I think the Knicks 
uh, with getting Mikael Bridges. I think they have put themselves in a position to be able to play with the Celtics. I think that Philly, New York, Boston, up that I-95 quarter, that's going to be great TV the whole season. So I think both of them have closed the gap. Health is for Philly, but Boston is still on the top of the heat, and we'll see how that season is going to go. Yeah, I mean, I think when you talk about Zay's point, first of all, very good points on both sides. I think y'all made some compelling arguments to support y'all argument. I think when you talk about Zay's point about the role players and the value and what they bring to the team, they keep the team together. They do the gritty work. You know, they get paid less, but they in some ways do more when you talk about the little important things and you need them in order to win a championship, Absolutely. but you also need your two stars. You know what I'm saying? And I think um, in this case, I, I kind of like in the middle because they made a very good point. You know, you didn't really need that extra star. You know, you had Tyrese Maxey who is continuing to ascend in his career and make really strong improvements to his game and just overall becoming just like a better overall player, not the same playmaker, that Harden was as far as being able to pass, but it's still growing. Obviously, we know he could score. He's that energizer, right? And clearly, he took them home a couple times in the Knicks series with clutch shots, you know, that extended games that probably should have been extended. You know, and then you got Joel Embiid, right? When you look at the last two champions, you had the Nuggets, you had Jamal Murray, you had Jokic, but guess what? You had the role players. You had the Bruce Brown, you had the Christian Brown, and you had the Jeff Green. Then you lose that little core of role players and guess what they're not making it past the second round okay then you got the celtics and you have the two stars the jalen brown the tatum but you have a versatile roster you know around them they probably didn't have the depth you know that they probably could have used but they did have the upfront talent they seven was good enough to written dynamic enough to win a championship and that's who you competing against they're going to run the team back they just paid Derek white they just yep. paid Tatum. They got Brown locked down. And they have a versatile team and a dynamic team and a talented team. And then you look at the Knicks, and they just added Mal Cal Bridges, you know, my guy, you know, my team, you know, New York. Talk to me. <laughs> we made a move for Mikel Bridges, and we also um signed OG, giving us a defensive combination of wing players yeah. that really could, you know, obviously be two of the best defensive wing players on one team. So you have us making moves. You have Boston coming back. Daryl Murray is not going to just sit there and watch two of his biggest competitors get better. Well, in the Celtics case, they're already better. They don't need to get better. You know what I'm saying? But the Knicks, in the Knicks case, you're not about to sit here and watch the Knicks get better. You're not about to sit here and watch the Magic get better by adding Kadavius Pope to the team, giving them a position of need, which is shooting. OK, so I think for me, when you talk about this move, yes, I, I do think they uh, they take a step forward. You know, I don't think they take many steps to the to the point where they pass my Knicks. I still like my Knicks as a distinctive threat to Boston, clearly. But I think the 76ers could be that team that's a threat to the Knicks in some ways, but not going to beat the Knicks. I still like my team. I still like the fact that we are younger. I still like the fact that um we do have the wing players we do i still like the fact well i don't like the fact that we we missing some depth there at center with the loss of hartenstein and obviously that's a big loss but i still like our team better i'm not just being a homer but what paul george is going to bring to the team is obviously he's one of the you know premier wing players in the league you know he can uh, in, impact the game offensively without having the ball in his hands Right. So, you know, he's going to fit right in there with Maxi and then be I mean, you really can't tell me he's not going to enhance, you know, um, them offensively and what they can do, you know, and um, the ceiling that they could have. But I do think it comes back to health and I do think it comes back to, you know, um, your best players showing up in the moments that they need to show up in, you know, which is game six and seven, you know. So we'll see if that happens. Well, they made great good. points, though. I, I, I'll say this on the role players but we always remember role players play better at home than they do on the road and 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 having those role players you can't win a championship without role players look at look at what happened to dallas in the finals kyrie they wore kyrie and luca down and and those role players couldn't make those threes and that's what happened so i say you make a great points about the role players because you need them but let me say this 
There's not a better player when healthy in the entire NBA than Joel Embiid. Nobody has answers for him. Nobody across the league. He just breaks down. But if he can stay healthy, Philly got a shot. And then, you know, Paul George and, and B, you know, that pick and roll is going to be beautiful, you know, lethal, you know. Yeah, so beautiful. you do have that in consideration. Beautiful. And I think one more point, too, is when you look at the mix and matches around and we could get into that. And Zay, feel free. I'm at the I'm actually going to lobby a question after I make this point. When you look at the mix and matches around Tyrese Maxey and Embiid over the years. Right. Well, this is before maxi because you had um jimmy butler that was there maxi wasn't drafted yet so let's start up with mb when you mix and match around mb you had jimmy butler who was the closer who we all know is a playoff performer and you know we know him he channels his inner jordan right then you had the james harden and maxi as a third piece you know and they had a lethal pick and roll as well but we all know james harden is not going to show up in the playoffs and now you have the poor george you add him into this equation around mb around maxi do you think this is the best version around Embiid as far as those three star players? Because I can make the argument so. Like, I think Paul George is a better player than Jimmy Butler. I think, you know, he does he could do a little bit more than Jimmy Butler, you know? So that's just me. What are your thoughts on that? From a talent perspective, 100 percent agree with you. From a talent perspective, Paul, there's not um there's not five players better than Paul George from a talent perspective. There's not five. And, and, that, and that's coming from, I'm talking about a healthy Paul George, no injuries. There's not five players better than Paul George. The issue is now how you complement play styles. You're talking about three isolation basketball players. Paul George is not a spot-up shooter. He is a guy who's on ball. When he doesn't have the ball, he doesn't cut. He's not looking to do actions. He's not looking to do pin downs. He is sitting, waiting for the basketball to be delivered to him. That was the issue in the, in, on the Clippers. That was the issue with the Indiana Pacers. That was the issue with OKC. He, he does not in, change his game no matter who he's around, you have to change your game to be around Paul George. My thing was, I've seen the improvements of Tyrese Maxey so much. I don't, as as a fan of watching his game, I don't want to see Tyrese Maxey defer to Paul George. I don't even like seeing Tyrese Maxey defer to Joel Embiid sometimes. Because Joel Embiid sometimes gets so confused on with the ball, he creates turnovers. turnovers. He, create, he makes takes bad shots. There's a lot of different things. Joel Embiid is such a dominant basketball player. But for whatever reason, he has moments where he doesn't know what to do, so he'll take a terrible shot or he'll turn the ball over. Tyrese Maxey has such a quick decision-making ability. He knows what he's going to do. He has great counter moves. He knows how to get to his spots and make tough shots or make get wide-open shots just based off his ability to dribble and do a lot of different things. I just feel like Paul George doesn't compliment Tyrese Maxey at all, and I don't want to see – um, a decline in his stats or his game because Paul George is on the court. Paul George is a great defender. He is a great scorer. He's one of the better two-way players in the league, if not top two, top three two-way players in the league. Does he compliment Joel Embiid and Tyree Maxey to the point where they could get over the hump and go to an NBA Finals, go to an Eastern Conference Finals, beat Boston, beat Milwaukee, beat Indiana even? I don't know. Because all the points we listed, guys get hurt. Guys have these situations where they play isolation basketball when they don't need to. They don't find the role players in time. And then when they do, the role players are cold. They're not in rhythm in the game. There's a lot of nuances of the game that I have an issue with this big three or even any big three in general. Because we see time and time again, you put three isolation players together, such as the Phoenix Suns, and you hope, oh, they have so much talent, they should beat the whole West. They should beat everybody. There should be nobody that should compete with them based on the talent they have. Unfortunately, this is not a league where you stack talent and the most talented team wins. It's whoever plays the best together whoever's the healthiest come the end of the season that is the team that wants to win the championship i don't know if philly could get it together to where everyone is being selfless and everything connects and gels well to where they're a top team in the eastern conference where they're so fearsome come playoff time i'm not confident in that yet because i've seen paul george on many different teams and every single team has the same issue heavy isolation i um people get exuded you're not in rhythm fourth quarter you're down 20 and it's just I've seen it time and time again. I'm just not confident to back on the state to go on back on this train saying their team is so talented. I don't see how they how could they how they could lose. I just can't do it anymore. I mean, look, I think you made some very valid points, and that's why, like I said before, I'm in the middle because I do think, and I laid it out, you do have your formula of having your two stars and complementary pieces around them. That's what won the last two championships. That's a model you should follow, not this super team thing that 
has proven to be a failed model in this era of basketball right now. First of all, I don't even know how to get in all this money. And then you got the CBA and all that. I'm not even sure, you know, how that's all going to pan out. But I think Lee, and maybe you can correct me if I'm wrong because I'm speaking for you here. I think your point is you still have Jarrell and B. You still have one of the most dominant basketball players in all of basketball. And that's not going nowhere. Unless he's unhealthy, you still have him. Your chances is still right there. Poor George can only enhance that. That's what I think you're trying to say. Absolutely. And remember, and B was playing in the playoffs on one leg. And he was still scoring. He's still dominant. Exactly. And I was there live when he did the off the backboard dunk on OJ. I know about oh, yeah. oh, my lord. No, he, he and he's just that. His thing is health. He gets hurt, and so if he's and these are big ifs. I mean, we're you know these ifs are huge because you know when you look at the history, he hasn't stayed healthy, right? When you look at the history, Paul George get nicked. You know, and he misses game. So camaraderie matters. We, you just say you talked about the Phoenix Suns. Hell, they played what thirty-five games together because Bradley Beal was always hurt, and then you know Booker gets hurt, and so they never even jailed to even have the opportunity to see what they had. And that's the only thing in my mind that will derail Philly because Paul George is a talented guy. He can get his own shot. He can post up if you want to put him on the box. He has a complete game. It's just and 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 to your point, Zay, don't take away with what Maxi does. I love Maxi's game. Let Maxi be Maxi because he's a young star. He's a young gun. And B's going to stir that drink. But can they all stay healthy so they play enough together to gel as a team? That's a big if. We you we know, have to quick, wait and see on that. I wanted to say real quick, and the reason why I'm so if about that. Everybody's healthy. Let's say, let's say they're all healthy and everything. Nature. Who is the third scoring option on this team? Paul George ain't no damn third scoring option. He ain't gonna let that happen. But I've seen Paul George. He's not gonna be no third scoring option to nobody. We just seen him with the Clippers with James Harden, Westbrook, Kawhi. He wasn't no third scoring option. I don't know if he's gonna be willing to defer and be like, all right, you guys take over and I'll I'll clean up the rest. I've seen this guy say, I want the ball. Give me the rock. I seen him do it with Prime Melo and with Prime Westbrook. So I, I just I, I don't know if he's gonna be like I'll be the third scoring option. Yeah, yeah, do your thing. Even though I feel like Maxi and Embiid have made great like great resumes to say we're over you right now, dude. You gotta play this. You gotta take a step back and let us work, and you'll work you in as as the game is in a flow. I don't know if Paul George is comfortable doing that right now in the stage of his career. We just signed a max contract, so I'm yeah. that's where that's where everything is so iffy. Again, we're all we all watch basketball. We all seen. All these guys play at their pinnacles, at their peaks. What, which one of these guys is going to say, all right, I'll play, I'll step back while you take over? Maybe Maxi, but just like, do you want that to happen? I, I mean, think, go ahead. I'm sorry. I think when you think about the Clippers last year, there was a time that the Clippers was the best team in the whole league. Everybody thought that they were finals favorite last year. Kawhi gets hurt and it derailed everything, but the Clippers had Kawhi. They had Paul George, they had Harden, they had Westbrook. Because you know Westbrook, when he gets in the game, he's gonna shoot. So they figured that out. I don't. I think Paul George is unselfish enough to do it because he did it at the Clippers. Until then, everybody started. Once Kawhi got hurt and all, we know the story behind Kawhi. So it's 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 what you're saying is not wrong. There, I, I don't say you're saying anything that's wrong. I think that they can defer because it's a long season and people. You know, if you're going, give them the ball. If they can't check Maxi, if it's a point guard that Maxi can take off the dribble every time or pull up, because Maxi, his range now is starting to be unlimited. Let him cook. Let him cook. And vice versa. Always let him be do his thing because there's no answer for that that big dude. But I, I hear what you're saying, Zay, and I don't disagree with you so much, but I've seen it happen, and I think Paul George can fit in. It's just you know, my thing is still always going to be health. But but, but great points, bro. Great points. I mean, look, like, you do have 82 games to figure out, you know, who's doing who. That It's a long season, you know, so you do have 82 games to figure that out. I think for me, the reason why I'm in the middle, but I'm, I'm starting to trend a little bit with, I mean, I, I can't even say either one of y'all wrong because I understand the point that you're making, Lee. You have Joel Embiid. You know what I'm saying? Like you're going to be, you're going to have a chance to compete. But I also agree with Zay in the sense that they should allow Maxi to be that clear number two. Like he's shown that he's capable of being such. Like he was at times, 
You know, Joel Embiid did his thing. He wasn't always healthy. But at times, I felt like he was the best player at times. Or the second best player in the series. At one point, Jalen Brunson wasn't playing well the first two games. And Jalen Brunson started coming along. But, like, we saw even with the Ben Simmons situation and they had to roll with Tyrese Maxey, he took a step. And they were they were like the second team in the East at that time, if I'm not mistaken, because they had Jarrell Embiid and Tyrese Maxey, right? And, and I feel like they kind of like, you know, they don't believe in Maxey as much as they portrayed. Like Daryl Murray is the one who came out and said, I wouldn't even trade Tyrese Maxey for a prime MJ. So show us that. If you wouldn't trade him for a prime MJ, mm -hmm. why do you feel that you need Paul George mm -hmm. and not just around these guys with depth? And a lot of them to go. You see the Knicks. A lot of people were saying the Knicks could get Paul George. We was like, we don't need him. We got Jalen Brunson. We are going to continue to invest in Jalen Brunson and our guy, Julius Randle. We just going to make a, a move for another wing player who can be that 3 and D guy in Mikel Bridges. We don't need Paul George. People was linking him to our team. We could have got him if we wanted him. Clearly, we could have. But we decided to go with a more complimentary piece around our stars. I just think Daryl Murray... We know his history. He wants to star players. That's how he want to build his team. And I think Zay is on to something, if you ask me too. So that's you know, my real, thoughts. Real quick, real quick. First and foremost, if you're watching the show, please put comment your thoughts on this. Sorry. Paul George going to the Philadelphia 76ers. And do you believe he works best with the 76ers and then makes him an Eastern Conference team? Secondly, please like and subscribe to the channel. We are working hard here. Y'all hope you like the content. We love the conversation. And I can't wait to continue this talk right now, starting with Clay Thompson. Please like and subscribe for all the up-to-date content. We're, we, you've been slinging shows left and right, slinging content left and right. Please don't miss anything. If you do, like, subscribe, leave a comment, or leave a question, something you may want to answer, something you may have. It's, all ideas are great ideas. Nothing's a dumb question. 